A hidden gem from 2018. Heroes of Hammerwatch is a four-player co-op roguelike with several player progression elements that make the progression a little less harsh. Made by a small team, Heroes of Hammerwatch comes at a relatively low price tag at $12. I even got it on sale at just complete random. Starting out, Hammerwatch is a pixel art game. When compared to a brand new game, pixel art in general has a charm that some people like while others don't. Hammerwatch is tastefully done in its execution of its pixel art and looks just fine. Other pixel art games, some do look better, but Hammerwatch does not look bad. The soundtrack in Hammerwatch is extremely good and honestly one of the best ones I've heard in a while. Looks like it's made by a small company of two people. Hammerwatch's soundtrack has a decent amount of chiptune and this is similar to the era its graphics are from and it's actually quite enjoyable overall. As said before, Hammerwatch is a roguelike, however it's not in the traditional fashion. Characters get levels that unlock higher stats, new skills, improvements to previous ones. The higher ranks sometimes add additional features to the skill that are just not a standard damage upgrade but actually add a whole new mechanic to it. Once you're in town, there's purchasable stat upgrades with gold, upgrades to damage, armor, critical chance, critical multiplier, spell damage, and spell resistance mean progression comes without making the player feel trapped with the inability to progress like in other roguelike games. Hammerwatch also does not take it too far with these upgrades, the game never becomes too easy, it's just more within grasp. This also provides the player with a sense of progression in their character, as well as giving the opportunity to always be able to progress at least a little bit, removing the brick wall sense of being trapped that comes with the other roguelike games. It strikes a great balance between difficulty and allowing the player to actually make progress. Doesn't matter, you got the T-Bone Steak dinner, but I'm gonna fucking die. Oh, no, I, oh, I didn't realize what it was. I, was. I thought it was an item to pick up, I didn't realize it was good. That's what happened. I wanted the steak dinner. I should work out back stay casting now just just bite you. I'm just gonna we'll stand here and wait for you guys to fight. Because I'm literally one hit from dying. Oh, Desmond, you're on your own now. Oh, you're you're all you're both. Oh, we're you. gonna die! <laughs> <laughs> you just hear Desmond, oh we're gonna die! There are several classes to choose from in Hammerwatch as well. You've got your standard melee paladin who actually has one of the best heals in the game and like an archery-based ranged, ranged unit that both of these were expected, and some spellcasters. One of those spellcasters is melee. This was unexpected, so I had to try it, and honestly, the melee spellcaster is like one of the best classes in the game. There also comes a lot of visual character customization and different, like, paints you can paint your color, but since your character's so small and made in pixel art, the visuals, uh, they really don't change that much, and a lot of the time, this goes unnoticed. It's a decent addition, however pointless it is. As you progress in dungeons, you will find random encounters. For example, there are traps that typically have rewards behind them. A shopkeeper that sells you items for the current run. Shrines that will buff you from a range of really amazing buffs to kind of useless. One gives like 5% health and mana regeneration, like per second while the other one gives you 50 armor, and this is like a 20% damage reduction, so it's not even remotely as significant as the regeneration. Back to the traps, the ones you come across will range from trivial to extremely dangerous. Spicy floors made out of spikes that will kill you almost instantly. A really annoying confusion floor that reverses all your controls. And also your typical arrows that pop out of the wall, and sometimes fireballs that pop out of the wall, and these actually do significant damage. Sometimes these are all even together in the same trap. This makes them relatively tricky to circumvent, and sometimes you'll see like a chest behind the trap, and you'll just give it a hell nah and just not go do it because it's not worth the risk. The items actually range from amazing to terrible as well. Some give flat additional stats that can be a huge buff in damage or survival ability. Others give stat-based bonus on the amount of items you have in your current inventory. This is a way bigger buff effect, seeing as it's a 1% per item you have. Some of them are 2%.
and on a run you can easily have 50 plus items once you progress through some of the levels. Other items will give you additional gold or ore gain to increase your income from them. Others will give you a tiny buff that's extremely pointless and serves almost no purpose except to give you that additional 1% from the adder items. And all the items are 100% random drop, different for each player, instant, not tradable, and not droppable to give to other players once you get them. So sometimes your friend will get the perfect item that your class uses, and you'll get the perfect item that their class uses, but there's no way for you to trade them. Some of the items also have set bonuses as well, and some of them range from just adding more stats to something completely different. Like one of them gives you a 1% chance on kill to get potion recharge, or another gives you 25% damage during combo. As you progress, you'll find ore and gold laying around the levels. These are used to buy the various upgrades in the town. Ore is used to upgrade structures in the town to unlock higher ranks of the upgrades that are purchasable with the aforementioned gold, as well as stars you get from leveling up your character for your skills. You also unlock a few classes by constructing some of these buildings, and these are for the specific class. This can only be done after you physically find the class hidden in the dungeon somewhere. As you progress, the cost of these upgrades becomes extreme, and really, if you wanted to unlock everything, it will require a bit of grinding. Now, an interesting part about ore and gold is you have to deposit it at designated drop-off points that are not always available. Sometimes you'll go several floors without seeing a single drop-off location. Once you drop off your resources, you can't buy anything from the shopkeeper either, seeing as the shopkeeper goes off of current run gold not your bank in the town. This leaves a bit of high risk, high reward, seeing as if you die without turning in, you lose everything you didn't turn in. The shopkeeper could sell basically any items in the game too, with a few of those selected at random as options at the current time. Most of the time they pick relatively good items to choose from too, so this creates a concept of cat and mouse where you don't want to deposit your money to have some money to spend at the vendor to progress further in the game, However, if you risk it and die, you lose it all. I'll be sure to buy, like, seven rock keys next time. Ow. Deck. Rip. <laughs> Back! I had so much money on me! And or! Also, gold is used a lot in the upgrades in the town, like I said previously, so if you're spending it at the shopkeeper, even if you complete the game, you don't get any of those items or any of that gold back that you spent so you don't get to keep it. Healing and mana recovery can be done in a few different ways. They both passively regenerate over time, and this effect can be modified by items and buffs, like I previously said. As you progress through the level, you can also find mana gems and food laying around that regen a small amount per. Sometimes you'll find bigger ones that actually almost give you a complete full recovery, but these are relatively rare, and the little ones are relatively common, so you always have kind of a steady stream of sort of recovery. Level design and maps seem to be randomly generated in Hammerwatch, however, a decent amount of the time they are similar in feel overall. They have a theme and for the most part they stick to it. At the end of each one of the acts there is a boss. Okay, nope. Oh my god. Uh, oh my lord, look how much health he has. Yep, I'm, I'm looking, Des. I'm, I'm not enjoying the look, though. Okay, where'd he go? I can press those things. They're all unique from one another and have special mechanics for each one. Unfortunately, the bosses drop weak items, though. They give a single item, maybe two, and, like, one or two ore, whereas later on you unlock a level shortcut that you get ten items for doing the shortcut that takes, like, two seconds. After beating each boss, you unlock that shortcut, and basically the first floor of each act will have a door you can go through that will bring you to the next act. Once you beat the shortcut, like I said, you get those 10 items, and essentially this just means that you can always get to where you were previously at when you were trying to progress, so that way you don't have to waste a whole bunch of time doing the levels you've already beaten over and over and over just to try to progress. 
Later on with the ore upgrade you unlock the fountain. This adds modifiers like mutators of different bonuses and detriments. If the game's too hard you can unlock a ton of powerful positive mutators that can help the progression immensely. You also can unlock negative mutators. When you choose it sets an alignment. Too positive and you have to pay gold to bring it back to zero to even use it. And for every point negative, however, you get 5% more experience in gold gain. Seeing as there's some opportunity to add a negative 10 to alignment, you can get upwards to 200% XP in gold gain. So sometimes, actually most of the time, you're going to run with a huge negative because you get way more stuff. Multiplayer for the most part is handled pretty well, however, it can be a little inconsistent and buggy. On occasion, my friends would try to join my lobby and it would just dump them into another random person's lobby. Another time, a person kept getting disconnected, the same person, over and over again whenever we were playing from the lobby. Switching to net testing mode under the Steam beta seems to have resolved this issue with the disconnecting, but it was weird because it was totally fine just days before that, for several days. A ton of people were complaining about this exact problem in the reviews on Steam, too. I guess they didn't decide to Google it because I figured it out in like 20 seconds. Once everyone's in the lobby and on net testing to resolve the disconnecting, the multiplayer works seamlessly at this point. One interesting note about multiplayer is if you die, you can actually be revived by a teammate. However, once they revive you, both players become solely to one another. The reviving player splits half their current health with the dead one, and if either player dies, they're both dead. In the end, I paid $5 for Heroes of Hammerwatch, and honestly, it feels like I way underpaid. Me and my friends ended up paying full price for the Witch Hunt and the Pyramid DLCs because the sale was over, which honestly on their own are not worth the price tag, but seeing as we got the base game on sale, it was relatively justifiable. We skipped the Moon Temple DLC because of the Steam reviews, overwhelmingly negative, basically. A lot of people were saying that it wasn't even remotely worth the price and to skip it, so we did. However, there's a decent amount of content here in the base game, and for the price, it's not bad. If you have a few friends to play it with, too, Hammerwatch becomes a great option for your weekend game to play with everybody when everyone's available. At the full price of $12, I can easily recommend Heroes of Hammerwatch, but also understand that there will be core similarities overall from each run, a little bit of a grind sometimes, and it's a roguelike, so each run may be very different from one another in difficulty, based on the buffs and items that you find that are both of which completely random. As always, thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, please feel free to leave a like or a comment on the video, maybe a comment on the feedback of what I could do better, the game, whatever. Oh, dragon. Dragon, whatever.